Self-defense doesn't work. More specifically, anything marketed as self-defense doesn't work. There's this perception out there that you can take a two-hour seminar and be able to defend yourself from a bigger, stronger opponent that catches you off guard. And that is an absolute lie. If you like attending little self-defense classes that your church or community center or whatever puts on, you need to know that you're wasting your time. Self-defense classes fundamentally don't work because they don't understand what self-defense actually is, the moves are usually pretty bad, and they don't give you any of the abilities actually required to make moves work. First of all, there's this immense misunderstanding as to what self-defense actually is. Self-defense is not fighting. If you find yourself having to use punches and kicks to keep yourself alive, your self-defense has already failed. If you want to stay safe and defended, you don't want to be in a fight at all. People get hurt in those. Real self-defense is very simple. Don't do sketchy things with sketchy people in sketchy places. That's it. I didn't say it was fun or easy, I said it was simple. If you are sitting by yourself in your suburban house with securely locked doors, you are as safe as you are going to get. If you're crossfaded hanging out with the Crips at Waffle House at 2 a.m., I hope you have an updated will. Obviously, you can do everything right and still be attacked and hurt, just like you could be wearing your seatbelt and still die in a car accident. Bad things always have a chance of happening, but self-defense is the art of lowering that chance to an acceptable level. Any class teaching you how to physically injure an attacker is not teaching you self-defense. If you are in a physical confrontation with a bigger, stronger attacker, or anyone, then your self-defense did not work. At that point, you need to know how to fight. Second point, most moves taught in self-defense classes don't work against anyone that knows what they're doing, or even anyone with like a little bit of experience. Some self-defense moves work if you already know how to fight, and some self-defense moves don't work at all. Some of the terrible moves are even taught by people that actually do know how to fight. They're simply watering down their moves to appeal to a mass market audience. To help me test some of these moves, I've conscripted my girlfriend Kaylin and my friend Nathan. Kaylin can test whether or not a move works on someone larger, and Nathan and I can test whether or not a move works on someone else your size. All three of us are perfectly average height for our respective sexes. Say I grab you here? Yes. So what you're going to do is, you're going to put your hands over the person's fingers, over the knuckles, and you're going to swing your arm to grab their wrist. Yep, go for it. Real hard, but do it better. Come on, I believe in you. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's not going to work. I can't even get it to work on the tiny person. And I did this. Okay. Well, Next move, Helen. I would instinctively try to turn. Look at this. I, I, I can't go through to you. I, I can't, but I certainly can with my other hand. And I could, oh, look at that. I was right behind you. So I can even, if I know. Go. Ah! <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> go. Ah! No. Unless you're the flash. I don't know. So when you're here, you got to be careful. You choke into the flow here. This hand pull. Get, they, this get hand this is put up here. See, to make him feel some pain. <laughs> here like this, yeah? And then from here, this hand come across like this. Bring it up. This hand follow. But start to stop with this flow, see? Pain compliment. Here we go. Big turn. Yes, and then come around. Now you may be wondering, but if those moves don't work, then what moves do work? And that's the wrong question. Because the answer is, it depends. 
It depends on the situation, what your opponent's trying to accomplish, what you're trying to accomplish, and what your skills and abilities actually are. If you're an elite grappler, you want the fight to go to the ground. If they're an elite grappler, you do not want the fight to go to the ground. You can't simply learn a couple moves for each situation because you cannot possibly know what the situation is going to be ahead of time. The only thing you can do is become genuinely skilled at fighting and have the knowledge and experience to adapt to whatever is going on. Third point, the ability to fight rests on three pillars, athleticism, skill, and experience. The first pillar, athleticism, means that if you're out of shape, everything you do is going to be an uphill battle. You need to be aware that fatigue can break anyone. A lot of people basically think to themselves, I may be unable to do a sit-up, but with the help of adrenaline, I'll easily be able to keep up with an angry 20-year-old athlete. I may get winded trying to open up a ketchup bottle, but if my children are in danger, surely I could fight off a trained attacker three times my size. I hear versions of these things in real life from actual people, as if adrenaline is indistinguishable from super soldier serum. If you haven't built up the athleticism to endure physical violence, then the only thing adrenaline is going to do is turn your legs into spaghetti. The second pillar of fighting is skill, and that does not mean learning three moves at a seminar that you then never practice again. I'm talking about years of training to build up a deep reservoir of techniques that you know how to chain together and transition between. Most moves don't work. Most takedowns, punches, kicks, and throws simply don't work when used in isolation. Even when they're performed by skilled martial artists. That's just the reality of fighting. Knowing three or four moves to defend yourself is like a doctor being able to name three or four organs. That knowledge is not going to save anyone's life. Self-defense classes like to teach moves, but moves are not the same as skills. A move is a thing you know. A skill is a deep well of interconnected knowledge. The third pillar is experience. If you haven't fought, then you don't know how to fight. That's why all decent martial artists do sparring. They put on some gloves and pads to cut down on injuries, and then they actually hit each other. If you've never fought with pads on a mat in a controlled environment against someone that doesn't actually want to hurt you, then you have no reason to believe that you can keep up in a life or death struggle with an experienced killer going against you while adrenaline turns both your legs and thinking ability to mush. We don't trust 16 year olds to just read a book and then drive a car. They have permits and driving school and provisional licenses before they get enough experience for us to actually trust them behind the wheel. If you don't have adequate athleticism, skill, and experience, then you have no reason to believe that you can fight. And self-defense classes that give you a handful of moves and then send you out into the world only serve to give you a distorted sense of reality. And overestimating your own abilities is a good way to get hurt. I understand that spending countless hours exercising, drilling, and sparring just for the one in a million chance that you get into a fight is not for everyone. And that's fine. Stay safe and limit risky behaviors to whatever level you're comfortable with. Just understand that there are no shortcuts to violence. You either need to know how to fight, or you need to not fight at all. Somebody comes and grabs your hair. Yeah, like really aggressively. Really hard, right? So you'd swing your arm over. Ouch! <laughs> so I got her hair. Ow, ow. Yeah, it just pulls your hair harder, ow, doesn't it? Ow. And she's still doing it. <laughs> what a trooper. I did my best. <laughs> now an actual defense against having your hair pulled. That's it. If you have long hair, it's gonna get pulled. And now you're gonna step back. As you do your step, you're gonna duck under. Make sure your head doesn't touch my wrist. Go straight through, and she's out. Nice! Now you already know if someone's doing this to you, they're incompetent. Yeah. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go. I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in Nathan's ability to get out from here. <laughs> oh, if they can figure out, uh, bring your elbows in, it's just not gonna work. 